This video was created on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, Kainai, Pakani, Sutina, and the Yarhi Nakoda Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. It seems like today, people that live on the outskirts of Calgary have got a bobcat encounter story to tell. So today, Let's paint a bobcat. Okay, for this lesson, you're gonna need some uh, watercolor paper. This is great paper to work with. Um, also, uh, you'll need uh, watercolors like this. Just a pan set will work fine for what we're doing. And uh, these charcoal pencils are, are great to work with to do your drawing out. And uh, I like to use these kneaded erasers. They're uh, really good to work with. And finally, um, you need a big brush and a fine brush that will hold water and uh, we'll get started. Okay, these are some of the supplies we're going to be using today. I've got a couple different size brushes, watercolor brushes. As long as they hold water, they'll work. Um, also, I've got a charcoal pencil. If you've just got a regular pencil available to you, that's okay. And as an eraser, like I showed you at the beginning, this is a kneaded eraser. I like to uh, put them in the shape of whatever I'm going to draw because it's, uh, it's good to know how the, the structure uh, feels of the creature you're portraying. So today it's a bobcat. Also, I've got a bigger watercolor brush and I'm using some paints, not unlike probably what you are using and you want to have a, uh, at least a yogurt sized container of water once we start putting the watercolor on. And also it's uh, the first snowy day out there and uh, I like to have some tea. So I've got my tea ready and uh, now we're ready to draw. Let's draw and paint a bobcat. Okay, we're gonna start by drawing the bobcat out and uh, feel free to pause the video if uh, if you're not keeping up with me it's uh, not at all a big deal and uh, go at your own pace and remember this should be fun um, this uh, drawing is about the uh, most fun that uh, I can think of Especially on a snowy day like today, it's our first snow and uh, a lot of snow shoveling today. I'll be going out uh, a couple times today. I was already out there this morning. The bobcat uh, loves the snowy, the snowy uh, weather. And uh, I didn't see any bobcat tracks out there, which might be good because we have a small cat and that wouldn't be cool. Now, uh, what I was going to say is, uh, if you look at the photo, this was a bobcat visitor to my good friends, Ken and Julia. Uh, their house is on the outskirts of Calgary or in the suburbs, and the bobcats have been um, coming into Calgary the last few years especially during COVID. And uh, this one came right in the yard and Ken and Julia have a pond and it came in there, but I think it would be better for me to uh, phone Julia and get her story about how the bobcat came to uh, their house. So let's give her a call. Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good. You know, I understand that you had an interesting visitor to your backyard recently. We sure did. And what was it? A, it was a beautiful bobcat. Yeah. yeah. So I stood there for a while watching the bobcat. And um, that video was taken after it had woken up and decided it was going to take a stretch. Wow. And I noticed that it looked at the... Uh, pond, the koi, and uh, for the fish in there, and it wasn't interested in the fish. <laughs> yeah, it didn't eat the fish, 
but it was um it was watching the fish it was kind of fun to watch the bobcat sort of um eyes to the water mm-hmm. um you know curious yeah but uh yeah it didn't attempt to take it out of the water or anything it almost looked like it was taking a drink from the pond too but i don't know if it actually did that oh okay and then it mm-hmm. and then the bobcat stretched out and went on its mm-hmm. way well, it kind of went back um, a little bit further back behind the rock um, in some trees that we have in the backyard. Yeah. And I believe it just went back to sleep again. Wow. Yeah, quite shocking, quite surprising. We never expected to see a bobcat in our backyard, so it was really, really wonderful. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. thanks thanks so much, Julia. And, uh, You're uh, welcome. Well, Thank we'll, you. we'll talk to you soon. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye now. Thank you. Bye. Well, that was amazing, amazing story that Julia just told. And uh, um, I don't know if I'd be afraid or not if that happened to me, but um, pretty amazing. Now, um, now, with your drawing, try and look at like I always say in my other videos, try and look at the the spaces, what they look like uh, that are around the bobcat. So you can see that this rock behind behind it, uh, it kind of comes in like this. And the angle of the bobcat's haunches here, there's a rock that comes down to the pond and then goes kind of like that and again if you've watched my my drawing videos you'll see that um, that at a certain point we like to do some uh, some shading and uh, I forgot to tell you you probably could use a Kleenex like this or if that isn't available um, you can just use a piece of toilet paper or whatever and I'm going to shade in all the areas that are kind of uh, dark and I'm just going to do it kind of uh, lightly And everywhere where I see that it's it's quite dark or black
Okay, for this part, I'm uh, we're going to start doing the the actual watercolor painting, and uh, I'm going to start off by uh, with my big brush. I'm going to find some. If you look at uh, this photograph, you can really see that there are some ready type browns. And kind of yellows and let's just see what that looks like on there. Okay, this rock, we can start off kind of on this rock behind the uh, the bobcat. See. Boom. Just gonna kind of go a yellow and red, almost like a. Whoops, it's a little bit too orange. Doesn't matter, because again, this is your artistic license. We're not taking a photograph or replicating a photograph. We're just using the photograph as a guide to show us. Um, what the bobcat looks like properly. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to put some ready orange in the bobcat's kind of haunches and on its body where I can see that it's kind of red. Whoops. And you know what? When you put it on, it can get some real interesting uh, effects. They're almost, uh, got, they are a big cat. They almost have stripes like uh, tiger markings on the head. Now, of course, the bobcat's much bigger than your cat. Your house cat, probably twice as big at least. And uh, I mean, I'm told that uh, that uh, if you have a big dog, they're not going to do anything. But <clears throat> anything smaller than it basically is it's going to try and eat if it's hungry so put some brown underneath there and the gray is a little bit I'm starting to use a 
a finer brush or a smaller brush than I was before because I can start to do little things that I see that uh, I can kind of make uh, corrections. And uh, sometimes it's just kind of fun to let uh, the, uh, the paint kind of run or bleed into the other stuff and that's what watercolor does. I'm just putting some spots on here. It's already wet, the paper is. And I'm just going along everywhere where I see kind of a spot. I'm just going to let it bleed like that. Also, I uh, was going to phone my friend Dwayne Mark today. He is a council counselor and um, and uh, cultural uh, coordinator at the Morley Community School and in Morley he's an old friend of mine and uh, he in his language of uh, Yithka Yarhi Nakoda he's going to tell us how we pronounce um, the bobcat's name in his language and hopefully he's going to tell us some uh good afternoon Dwayne I'm the last in the Paul Dwayne I'm phoning because uh I'm interested in knowing a little bit more about uh, the bobcat what would uh, you call a bobcat in uh in uh your language the bobcat in uh, in uh, Ieska, mm -hmm. or the basic term is e mu, which is lynx or the bobcat e mu. Oh, what about uh, the big cat, the uh, mountain lion? How would you say that? The large mountain lion is called Ihmu Tanga, which literally means uh, large lynx. Tanga means big or large. Ihmu is lynx, but in this case, it's uh, mountain lion or cougar or puma. So it's the larger version of the feline, which is Ihmu, Ihmu Tanga. Okay, well, Dwayne, thank you so much for uh, for sharing that with us, and I uh, hope uh, in another, uh, you know, before Christmas that uh, we can get together and uh, we can um, we can learn about uh, the uh, the wolf. I'm really excited about that one, and I know you are too. And and again, thank you so much for uh, for sharing that with uh, with uh, with us. Huh. I think he is Paul. Thank you for having me today and I hope all of this information is enlightening for people out there. Well, it was so great to talk to uh to Dwayne after all these years. I didn't see him all through COVID, so it's good to talk to him. Just yesterday, uh, a friend of mine, Ms. Morrison, uh, a teacher at Ecole Percy Pegler in Okotoks, where I live, asked me if I'd come in and uh, 
show uh, her students, her grade five, six students, how to draw a bobcat. So they did pretty well, as you can see. Nothing wrong with using white. And uh, at this stage of the, the drawing or the painting, I mean, I like to uh, load up my brush with some uh, white and go around and now look at the photo of the bobcat and what do you see in terms of where are the real white parts, okay? So what I see is up, uh, there's some fur coming off the top of uh, the bobcat's head here, uh, which is very white. Also, there's a great white mark um, coming this way on the bobcat's eyes. They really frame the bobcat's uh, markings really beautifully that those uh, whites around uh, the eyes as you can see we can make the, them very white I'm kind of lucky here because uh, I've got our cat Khaleesi sitting on my lap well I'm painting, so I'm really getting in the spirit of the uh, the cat or the bobcat. She's just a little cat, but um, they're they're related, the big cats and the the house cats, and in this case, the uh, the bobcat. It's pretty much done. Um, what I've done is I've gone in and uh, with some uh, charcoal pencil here, done a little bit of line work to, uh, to show the uh, fur going this way and that way, put in some whites. And I think that, uh, I think that that's about as far as I wanna take this one. Okay, so it is the 11th. 11th month of and it is the third day 2022 now I'm gonna call this uh, um, I'm not gonna call it Bobcat uh, this one is gonna be called emu remember that was the um, that was the uh, Yarhi Nakoda translation for Bobcat, so I'm going to write that here. That's what Mr. Mark told us. And just going to erase this a little bit here before I sign it so it's a bit cleaner. And that's it for that.